just head to the movie and see and see the motive because i was wondering i'm like what the fuck is the motive here <sighs> can't believe i'm going to watch a movie with nagi tail anyways <coughs> why hello there hudge man i knew you come that means you noticed it too right the case time the imitation case and hey, fuck yeah imitation case in which the killer uses the movie and the sh whatever I know. I haven't watched the movie yet. I see that you really should watch the movie. Hey, manager, our customers here. Did you call me? Yes. Did you call me? Did you call me? Hajime is the customer. Oh, shut up. I knew I said I would rather do something else than watch the movie, but fuck off. Do you have a problem with that? What are you gonna do? Uh, you say you didn't want to watch it, but I knew you wanted to see it all along. Is that what Sundere Hajime looks like? You're really a tough guy. You're really so devoted to being Sundere. You even bought the uh, the Monokuma sticker for 1.5 $1 million dollars. You paid 1.5 million dollars for a sticker? It's nothing. In exchange for not watching the movie, Hajime paid 1.5 million dollars for a Monokuma sticker. Come on, since we're talking about it anyways, why don't you show it to Nagito? Shut up. Uh, by my by my resistance was um fuck. But my resistance wasn't vain. And Monokuma reached into my pocket and took the sticker. See this one. I'm sorry, I was born stupid. That's you bought this for 1.5 million dollars. Uh, but in the end, he's still gonna watch the movie. Who cares about that anymore? Just hurry up and give me an invitation here. ticket. Okay, here you go. It already says so on the invitation ticket, but it's only effective today at this time. By the way, I can only give away one ticket per person. You only have one chance to watch it for free. I've already stamped today's date onto the sticker, so you don't be able to cheat. Don't worry, I only plan to watch it once. To it, okay. Then I'll go prepare the protection reel. Please wait. Hey. Uh, Hajime, about the invitation ticket, I strongly recommend you keep that safe. Huh? Why? No reason, just think of, uh, think of as a protective charm. <sighs> Whatever. I'll go and fucking watch the stupid movie. No, no, no. Hold on, I'm still in the middle of preparing. Don't rush, Are don't rush. Sure? Hasty boys get hated, you know. Might even get hated by boy bears too, you know. <sighs> you can hate me all you want. Then what the fuck you want me to do? Do I just talk to Nagito? Impossible. Hodge, man, I can't believe you bought that thing and you paid $1.5 million for it too. But even you said you would just settle with the money to get out of seeing the movie. You're right, but that means I would have had to buy the thing, you know. Just leave me alone. What's over here? That reminds me, the item on the table is counter. Yeah, it was one of the bags. Thanks for finally saying that it came from here. This one looks like a tote bag made of ham cloth with decal of Monomi's face on it. Ah, did catch your eye, all purpose tote bag. Uh, it's a limited item, only one person can have it. Ah, uh, if the tote bag's gone, that means. Whoa there, were you interested in buying that tote bag? Well, that's just too bad, I already sold it. Who'd you sell it to? Stupid? There's no way I fall for that. There's no way I say something that reveal the killer is. So the killer bought it? Oh! I remember you said that it was only, uh... There was only one because it's a limited item, right? Uh, it's not limited to one. It's more like it's limited to one person. What's the difference? When you buy one bag, you get another one for free. It's a common pr uh, practice to bait customers with bonus prizes. For some reason, hearing you say that pisses me off. Okay, so someone could have bought the bag, gotten another bag, and they didn't want it because it was extra and gave it away to someone else. Or something like that. Well now. I then that wait, hold up. So I'm gonna assume one of the people that died must have bought the bag. And then gave it away to the whoever the fuck the killer was. Because that would make sense, right? Now then, I should forget that I carelessly made a slip of the tongue. Looks like the preparations are complete, so please enter the theater right away. This is exciting! Exciting! Whatever. Let's see what motive you had, you bastard. Um. I apologize for keeping you waiting. 
World famous director Monokuma presents a stunning masterpiece that reduced America audience to tears. The Wizard of Monomi 2.5D will be screening shortly. <coughs> I'm sorry, I had to clear my throat. From the title alone, I had a bad feeling about this 2.5D. Sounds so half assed. Please relax and enjoy the film! Monokuma was born in a remote village full of old people because the death rates outpaced the birth rates. One day, Monokuma was swept up by a tornado created by a helicopter gunship during a routine military exercise and was whisked away to Monami's country. Monokuma wanted to return to his homeland so he could go back to pestering the old people for change. So he began his journey to see the wizard, Monami, who was rumored to grant any wish one desires. Along the way, he met a very loyal group of friends. Monokuma met a Monami scarecrow who was missing a brain. When he recommended that she commit suicide, the Monami Scarecrow hanged herself and died. He also met a Monami Lion who was missing her courage, so he pumped her full of arrows. Okay, what the fuck? He also met a Monami Tin Man who was missing a heart, so Monokuma sliced her into lumps of iron. Okay, so if there was three killings, then Akane would have died. Oh, shit. Alright. After a lot of other stuff happened, Monokuma finally reached the wizard Monami, the great and powerful. Eventually, one thing led to another, and he started beating the crap out of Monami. And in the end, he somehow usurped the kingdom from her. With this, Monokuma enslaved the old people, took their pensions, and lived the rest of his days in luxury. And he lived happily ever after. The uh, that was a bootleg-ass movie. Okay, so... Okay, that makes sense. Okay, alright. So, since Ibuki was gullible... She was the one missing the brain, I guess, and then got hunged. Akane was supposed to die next, but they can't kill three people. Then... Okay. Then the person who was missing the heart was Hayako. She... In that, that fix her, fits her to a T. She says she didn't want to trust anyone and shit like that. So, yeah. Um... Did they... They didn't slice her limbs, though. They just slit her throat. Phew. Man, movies are the best. The drama was so moving that I <clears throat> that I needed two boxes of tissue for uh, on one for each hand. Jesus Christ! One for each head. My bad. What the fuck? Each head. What are you talking about? Shut up. So now then, let's meet again at the class trial. Goodbye. I'm too disgusted to even let her sigh right now. That's all I can say to describe the situation. But that did give me insight. So Akane got lucky and dodged a bullet. <laughs> How was it? Actually, I don't even have to ask. I totally expect your reaction. That was honestly the worst movie I've ever seen. Is it even okay to call that a movie? But thanks to the movie, you know, right? Yeah. Just like he said, the characters who were killed in the movie match the victims in the case. Ibuki's death hanged, uh, matches the scarecrow's death, and Hayako spent body, the lion stuff. Really? I mean, he said the lion with no courage. I would have thought that the the person with no fucking, uh, with no heart would be her, the Tin Man. But. Uh, it would have been complete imitation if the killer killed three people, but it seems that it wasn't possible. 
Perhaps the killer is upset about that right now, or if the killer's main goal was just to imitate murder, they should have uh, they should be upset about it. But I'm not sure if that's even true. <coughs> oh man, I'm really losing my voice. That's why it's like so hard for me to read right now. All right, uh, let me fix the microphone. That's not the microphone like fell by itself. It started like lowering itself. Anyways, um, I want to head to the motel. I feel like the more uh, I'll about to say the motel. The motel might be more important than the hospital right now, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Need to investigate that room. I just remember I never went inside any of the rooms in the motel. Plus, I don't even know where Hayako's room is. That'd be faster just to ask someone. Gundam! So you have a pee. You're here, right? Come on out. How are you talking to me? I can see you, dude. <clears throat> God. I can see you. Did you really think you could hide? I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like coughing and yawning and everything. Did you really think you could hide your presence like that? I wasn't trying to hide in the first place. Hey, which room was Hayako staying in? Open the door to the center room. <laughs> However, are you prepared? Yeah, uh, make sure you pray to whatever god you hold dear, and you might want to bring an extra pair of underwear. I wonder, how could this guy talk to his parents and teachers? Alright, he said the center room. This one? Yeah. I assume there's a lot of blood in here. Looks like it's locked, but I got the key. Open, just as I thought. This key was to her room. Alright, let's go inside. Hmm. So there's a lot of less blood here. Okay, so Hayaka was staying here. She only stayed here a few nights, so it doesn't really feel like her room, but I feel a little conflicted. Oh, hey, Sonya, you're here. Did you... Did the door open? How'd you get in here? Yeah, Hayaka put the key in her kimono, so I used that to open it. I see. What? Did something happen? No, it's just... I'm starting to believe it might be my fault. Her fault? What does that mean? Yeah, what do you mean? What are you talking to? And is that... Let me let me see over here. Uh, there's a fucking Monokuma in there. There's a mirror, but small and rusty. There's no way anyone could use this. The mirror's also kind of cracked, isn't it? Uh, let me do this. Grab that fucking Monokuma. No. Yeah, whatever, Monokuma. I got you. I got your fucking number. All right, uh, Sonya, tell me what the hell's going on. The moment Hayako came to this motel, she completely shut herself in this room. She was afraid of the despair disease, so she was cautious of you guys too, right? However, her fear of the disease was not the only reason she locked herself in a room. Uh, I guess the fear you can call her a coward. Then who the fuck would have been the... Who would have been the, uh, the person without a heart? Nagito, maybe? I don't know. Uh, she locked herself in a room. She had another reason. Besides that disease, the other reason would make her lock herself in a room... Her kimono. Her kimono? Yeah, um, yesterday I went to go talk to her. Since she had been in her room for some time, I told her it might be good for her to go outside for a bit. She kept the door to her room key locked, but, she, uh, but by coincidence, it's not locked at that time. Oh, it wasn't locked at that time, and then I saw it. Um. Hayako was crying and struggling with her kimono sash. She didn't. Uh, she did not want to smell bad, so she took a shower. But then she could. Then she could not tie her sash anymore. My hero is no longer with us, so I believe uh, she was having trouble with it. So that's why it was on backwards. Oh, that's fucked up, man. She didn't leave her room because she couldn't tie her kimono, huh? The others might have thought it was just silly sash, but it must have been a serious issue for her. 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 Uh. Fuck. Hayako told me that she learned how to tie a sash from Mahiru. That Mahiru kindly taught her the basics. That's why she wanted to be able to tie her sash on her own. She probably couldn't. Uh, <clears throat> probably could not forgive herself for not being able to do it, especially since Mahiru taught her. I cannot really understand her her feelings, which is why I said what I did. What did you say? Hyoko, by chance. 
Are you having trouble wearing your kimono? Stupid! What are you saying? Of course I can do it! Because Mahiru taught me. That's why I can do it on my own. Uh, um, if that is the case, how about you do it someplace where there is a mirror? Do you remember the full-length mirror in the storage room at the music venue? If you do it while standing in front of a large mirror, I am confident you will be successful. Also, shutting yourself in your room like this may be bad for your health. Um... And that was when she kicked me out. It cannot be. Could it be? Uh, Hayoka remembered that? Are you saying she went to the music venue to wear her kimono? Hmm, I can see that happening. Hako locked her room and made sure she put the room key inside her kimono. I can't imagine that she was abducted by someone. If so, that's weird. Hey, did you tell anyone about this before the incident, or was someone listening in on your conversation? I never told this to anyone, but I do not believe anyone was listening to our conversation. Nobody knew? If that's the case, how did the killer know Hayaka was going to the music venue? Something's wrong. Okay, I got her account. I don't see anything else that looks suspicious. There's no sign that someone made a mess in our room. I feel like I could really... Alright, so... So, okay. Because my thought was... Abduction, I don't know... May have knocked her out somehow and just fucking... Slit her throat. Painlessly. Or something like that. Oh, uh, wait, what? Wait, what is there worth investigating here? Fuyuhiko, you got something to say to me? Damn. Hey, Hajime, can, I exp uh, can you explain this to me again? What happened when you first discovered Ibuki's body? It was the same as when I found it with you guys. Ibuki's body was hanging from the uh, baton lighting. However, there was no however, there was no body discovery announcement made. That's why I went to uh, to get you guys. I met up with Chiyuki at the motel, and when we were about to go back to the music venue, you met up with me, economy And when we went back to the music venue, the entrance door couldn't open. So, we had no choice but to break down the door and discover Hayako's body was suddenly there too. Yep, that's what happened. This is the most important part. When you arrived at the motel, who else saw you besides Chiki? There well, was Gundam. Gundam and Monomi. Did you hear? A body was found. Body? Oh, shit. Could it be? Do you intend to spread lies that Nagato in order to confuse us all? Besides Chiki, I also saw Gundam and Monomi. I see. So, Kazuchi and Sonya didn't appear, huh? Do you think those two are suspicious? Well, Hayaka was killed between the time you saw Ibuki's body and when broke down the door, right? So obviously those two are the most suspicious since they weren't with us. Ah, uh, that, that might be it, but... Uh, while, we're, uh, while we're at it, let me tell you my alibi, too. Uh, when the morning Monokuma announcements woke, uh, woke me up, I went straight to the hospital. I saw Mikon panicking in front of the hospital. I asked her what was going on, and she said Ibuki disappeared. So you guys went up to look for Ibuki, huh? Yep, we're circling the island and we came to the motel and saw you guys. Did you see anyone else while you were circling the island? No, I went to the movie theater and there was a street full of machines to look for Ibuki, but we didn't see anyone. Uh, are you implying I don't have an alibi because I didn't run into anyone? It's unreasonable for you to doubt me. The time that Mikan and I were on our own looking for Ibuki wasn't very long. In a short time, there's no way I could have killed Hayaka and wrapped her around the pillar with duct tape. It's true, I feel like there wasn't enough time to do that after I left the music venue. But the fact is, Hayaka was killed and we did discover her body. What? You still doubt me? Well, I'm used to it. It's true I've done things that deserve to be doubted for. So don't worry, even if you doubt me, I don't plan on dismembering you and encasing you in... Oh god, in concrete. Alright. Uh, I wanted to know in advance, but I have to do to the end up like that. What? Sorry, what? Anyways, so we have his account. That's cool. Are we done here? Yes, we are. Good. Alright, so, um, where else do we gotta go? Hospital. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go check Ibuki's room. I'll investigate the lobby first. Like what? I guess... I'll ask Kazuchi. Hey, you prepared the surveillance camera unit, right? 
Yeah, so, I didn't make any weird modifications or anything. It's not like I'm suspicious or anything. Did you get that from the shady-looking alleyway where all the machines were lined up? Yeah, I just tweaked it a little. Then if there was another surveillance camera unit... <clears throat> Would it be possible to transmit a signal to the hospital from the, those cameras too? No, that's impossible. Originally, surveillance cameras and surveillance monitors are only used as part of the same unit. The video that was filmed with the hospital camera can only be viewed on the hospital monitor. The video that was filmed with the music venue camera can only be viewed on the music venue monitor. Hey. But if we felt, uh, but if I left it like that, we would have been able to. Fuck, I can't read. But if I left it like that, we would have been able to communicate, so I decided to swap the cameras. So that's how you guys were able to view the hospital footage from the music venue and vice versa. However, each surveillance camera unit manages to broadcast based on a specific number. So even if you bring the same model camera or monitor, you won't be able to interfere with the signal. Meaning, even if the other surveillance camera's existence, it would be impossible to broadcast with it. However, I didn't just swap the cameras. I modified them and increased the wireless range. If I had done that, it would have been able to use it. Yeah, you're right. You did work on that. Cool. The surveillance camera unit on top of this. As long as the music is blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hey, Hajime, there's something I want to ask you. You first discovered Ibuki's body at the music venue, right? But why did you go to the music venue? You had no reason to go there. Did you see something with the cameras? Right. Oh, yeah, I also wanted to ask you that. It'd be difficult. Uh, it'd be different for the camera unit could record, but it's only good for household functions. Hey, hey. Tell me, Hajime. Yeah, that's exactly it. I saw a strange video on the surveillance camera unit. It showed the music venue stage. There were black curtains hanging like there was, uh, like there is now, but the whole display was pretty dark because they were using just candle lights. There was rope hanging from the ceiling, and beneath there was a stepladder on the floor. And right away, a person wearing a hospital gown and a handbag on their head appeared. I didn't know who it was because their face was covered, but now I know uh, it must have been Ibuki. She walked straight onto the stepladder and, without any hesitation. She climbed the stepladder on her own free will, and then she grabbed the rope, and that's all I saw. The candlelight began, uh, being used must have been snuffed out or something, because the screen went black all of a sudden, and then it was displaying anything anymore. Man. Well, if the candle goes out, obviously nothing will show. Modern surveillance cameras have, uh, in, damn it, had infrared functions, so they can still show up even in the dark. Hmm. But, the one- <coughs> I can't fucking, like, I can't speak because my throat hurts. Anyways, but the one I got from the machine earlier was really old model. Uh, hold on. At the time, you say you didn't know the person wearing the handbag was Zabuki, right? Yep. You didn't know it was her, but you saw she was trying to hang herself. So you rushed over to the music venue and tried to stop her. But I didn't make it in time. Still, she climbed the stepladder on her own. Does that mean she committed suicide? Wouldn't that mean she took her own life? Buki committed suicide? What do you think, Chiki? Mm. There's no doubt Buki climbed the stepladder on her own, right? Yeah, no doubt. If so... Mm. Hmm. You. Hey, don't you think it's far as... Uh, do you think... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, don't you think for so long, if you don't know, just be honest about it. Well, of course she doesn't. There's no way we'd be able to figure out so easily. She had the gullible disease, right? Somebody must have told her something that said, Hey, man, if you hang yourself, this could happen. Mm. Huh. Ah. Oh, yeah, I need to investigate the conference room on the second floor. Mm. I'm heading over there. Okay, cool, you do that. What the heck? She ran away all of a sudden. Uh, she said the conference room, but why would she mention the conference room all of a sudden? Also, I might just think it over, but did she seem a little upset? I mean, she would be a little upset, right? She did say it takes her time to think to form her sentences. Anyways, uh, hey, Kane, what's up? I'm gonna go and check Ibuki's room, which was this one, right? Ah, uh, okay, never mind. I guess you're not gonna let me check Ibuki's room. That's, that's, that's okay.
What is this? It's pitch black. I can't see anything. Where's the switch? Don't turn it on. Huh? Cheeky, are you there? If you turn on the light, it's going to be fully exposed. It'd be embarrassing. What? Fully exposed? Hey, Hajime. If you poke out your eyes, you can turn on the light. What are you going to do? Are you going to poke them out? I'm, I'm not going to poke out my eyes. Aww. Aw, bummer. Are you changing into a... Into a gown? Troll face? Oh, God. Oh, not troll face. Troll fail. Whatever. Fucking... Of course, they had they had to make a gamer reference. Fucking shoot myself. Thank God. Now, sooner, uh, no sooner than she finished saying that, I heard a dry sound of curtains being drawn. There was a flash of intense light and stunned my eyes a little. Squinted my eyes until they started adjusting the light. Ah, uh, and I saw Chiki have uh, finished opening the curtains. It's covering the window. Hmm. Hey, hey. Were you surprised? Surprised? I don't get it. I got it. So, the curtain must have been used to block light, I assume. Got what? The curtains in the conference room are designed to completely block out light. Mm -hmm. There's a projector in here, so they were probably careful about light shining through. See? See? Black curtain. Uh, what? A black curtain that blocks light and is also long enough to reach the floor. It's perfect. A black light blocking curtain. That's why it was so dark. So, something wrong with that? Mm. I'm still in the middle of investigating, so it's a secret. Yep, she's upset. But still, what was that all about? Uh, that bit about being embarrassed of looks and troll fail. I just want to mess with you. Yep, she definitely upset. Why is she acting so childish? Because I'm a gamer! Woo! Alright, guess I'll talk to her? Hey, did I do something to make you angry? That's wrong. I'm not angry, I think. Well, are you or aren't you? If you're not angry, you would have done something so weird. Yeah, I'm already over what happened earlier, so you don't need to worry about it. I think. Is she teasing me? Okay, I guess I'll check out the curtain. So, this was a light blocking curtain. That's why it was so pitch black. Projector? Check out the projector. There's a projector. Uh, there's probably is a clue. Check out the windows. Uh, there's a really big window. Okay, I guess we're done here. See you later, Cheeky. I don't think we have anything else to investigate, really, right? I mean, we can all we can talk to Akane. Maybe Akane found something out. Hey, Kane, you got any news for me? Now then. Yeah, I'm finally getting back to my normal self. Hajime, help me out with my recovery. Can you touch my boobs when you went? What? You can touch my boobs as you. Why? No thanks. She was bear. Uh, she was bearable when she was quiet. It'd be so much better if she's still feeling the after effects. She beat me up if I said that out loud. Anyways, why are we here? Hey. Well, I never been sick or hurt before, so I had no idea, but. Hospitals grow. Wait, what? Hospital gowns are pretty comfy. I was thinking I might be able to keep wearing one. Don't tell me you plan on wearing hospital gowns from now on. Uh, that's the idea, but it looks like they're out of stock. It looks like there was one gown for each patient room, so I thought it'd be more in empty rooms. Uh, there weren't any gowns. Yep, that's right. Ibuki, uh. Ibuki, uh, fuck. Ibuki died wearing one, so. The only one left is the one Nagito was wearing. <laughs> if I had no choice, then I should just use Nagito's. It's a unisex size, so I'll probably just be able to fit in. Weren't you wearing a gown? Hold on, what happened to the gown you were wearing? Are you saying I should wear the one I already wore? That's gross. I, mm, I mean, pretty sure there's a place where you can do laundry around here or something like that, right? Wearing clothes someone else was wearing is even grosser. Like... No time to dilly dally. I totally left me come back at the music venue. Crap, I gotta get back soon. Well, it's okay. Already investigated. The, uh, we already investigated the area. I guess I'm done investigating the hospital. Oh. Hello! How's everybody doing? It's me, Monokuma! Yay! Awesome! 
Go fuck yourself, Monokuma. The class trial's gonna start, you know. So, make sure you guys come to Monokuma Rock ASAP. <laughs> I'll see you soon. It's already time. So, this again. I need to go to the place again. But now's not the time to be a coward. The reason Ibuki and Hayako became victims in order to find the truth. The only thing I can do is go. Everyone who heard the announcement had gathered in front of Monokuma Rock. And soon enough... Welcome! Is everybody here? Do you guys want to go to the class trial? Wait! Hey, jerk! Hold on right there! Why? Don't get in my way! You're such a dumb little sister who's short of a few brain cells. Hey! My brain works just fine! Hey, hey. Monokuma, what do you do, Nakamaru? Hmm. I see, so you come to avenge him. Avenge? This sounds like he died! Uh, sounds like, you say. Oops. Anyway, anyway since Nakamura is unfortunately unavailable today, let's just say he's absent. Goodbye. Now then, I gotta go first. I won't let you. Now hold on, I won't let you escape. Hey, hey! Hey, did you hear what he just said? Huh? Don't worry about it, there's no way Nakamura's dead. He's just trying to piss us off. Damn it. Of course he's not dead, there's no way. Not in a million years. Well. More importantly, it's best if we worry about ourselves for now. <laughs> If something happens here, every every one of oh goddamn every one of us except Nekomaru will die. <laughs> Why? Why are you excited about that? How about it? Who knows? Maybe I'm just looking forward to seeing poetic justice prevail. What are you saying, fiend? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. See? Then let's go. All right, let's hurry up and get over with. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Huh? You know. I really don't have any suspects to look at. So, uh, the only people I can think of right now, first of all, Nekamura was nowhere to be found. Like, he's absent from this, so obviously he didn't do it, right? The only people who could have done it is, uh... Oh, God. The only people who could have done it is Gundam, Kazuchi, Sonya, and I don't want to say it, but maybe Mikon. Mikan's a little suspicious. I think she's suspicious for the fact that somehow you know you can't perform an ops. Like, the killer somehow knows they can't perform an autopsy because of the temperature. Sounds like someone with medical experience would know that, right? And on top of that, uh, when they went to go check out. Oh, wait, never mind. Hmm. I was gonna say, on top of that, when they went to go uh, check out the. When her and Fihiko said they were going to go and check out and look for uh, Ibuki, uh, Fuhiko said that he went to the movie theaters in Electric Street, which would leave Mikon to the club and wherever else she was close to. The club and the hospital, basically. So she would be there, and maybe she would have time to do something? I don't know. We stepped onto the escalator and sent it towards the gate uh, at the mall of Monokuma Rock, and that's when I suddenly noticed. I noticed our lineup silhouettes keep getting smaller and smaller. But I can't turn back now. If I turn back, I won't be able to press forward. And when everyone was inside Monokuma Rock, The elevator began its deep descent as usual. But nobody said a word. As we stood there trying to figure out what to say to each other, the elevator descended deeper and deeper. And when it descended as far as it could go, it finally stopped. The elevator doors opened slowly, almost tantalizingly so. Light poured throughout the other side, eroding the boundaries of the darkness, and I walked into the place. My my, feels pretty toothless with all these empty seats. Well, two people got killed at the same time, and Nikamaru's not here either. 
Is Nagamaru really not participating? If he's alive, you should invite him. No, no. Why bother? Yes. What? Well, now. now then, let's begin. <laughs> it's the beginning of a long way class trial. Please enjoy to your heart's content. And so, the curtain to the third class trial was about to open. Ibuki Miyota, the ultimate musician. She was really loud, but she was the mood maker of our group. When I saw when I was with her, all my pain and suffering just seemed to melt away. Hayako Sananji, the ultimate traditional dancer. Just from looking at her adorable face, you never know what she actually what uh, she ah fuck, you never know she was actually selfish and foul mouth. But she was trying to change herself. And she was desperately trying to become on terms with Mahiro's death. The person who killed those two is among us. I definitely can't believe it. But whether I believe it or not is relevant. Unless I figure out the truth, I won't be able to escape from this hell. That's why... I must find out, no matter what the cost, for our sake, for our friend's sake, for Ibuki and Hayako's sake. And so, the curtain to the third class trial was about to open. This life-threatening trial, billowing with hope and despair, has begun.